good afternoon. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, today is a review of hanging car associated arthritis. It's not from a specialist point of view, it's from the family. I have not even myself. Objective is to identify the pathogenesis of the anchor associated vasculitis and appropriate evaluation of the patient with anchor associated vasculitis and to describe the management option available for the anchor associated vasculitis. Going to your objective. Introduction. Uh, vascular ties is uh, the term that we use in the presence of inflammatory leukocyte, causing the damage to the neural structure resulting in bleeding and loss of vascular integrity, and uh, causing downstream tissue ischemia and necrosis. It can be infectious and non infectious vasculitis. In, today, we are talking about non infectious vasculitis. Uh, it is classified based on the uh, predominant size of the vessel involved. It includes large vessel, vasculitis, medium, and small. So this is the, the, the famous picture of the, uh, the vasculitis. And we are talking, going to talk about the anchor vasculitis. Anchor vasculitis is the, the it involved in the medium and small blood vessel. Uh, there's a uh, three disease in anchor vasculitis. One is GPA, uh, glomerulomatosis with all the engines, or, or, or also called GPA, formerly known as uh, Wagner. Next one is MPA, or microscopic polyangitis, and last one is eosinophilic glomerulomatosis with uh, polyangitis. It's also called GPA. Epidemiology. The incidence from folded is a rare disease, it's between 10 to 20 cases per um, million. GPA is the most common out of three. You can see about five to 10 uh, cases per million. And MPA is less uh, less common than GPA, and then EPA is the least common. The common onset of age is 65. That all the cases are reported at all, all ages. We have a patient here, about 25 year old, we got the uh, GPA. I have a patient in the, the VA. He has the GPA. Uh, the other patient are like 50 something. And male and female are equally affected. So mobility and mortality is uh, very considerably uh, high. About 20% of the patient uh, become uh, ESKD in, in five years. Before we found out there's a steroid and before we found the steroid and cytoplasmoid uh, patient, median survival of the patient with anchor vasculitis is five months. But also we found but right now we can achieve remission in 90% of the patient by six months. And then uh five years survival rate is around 75%. But the last rate is state. Significantly very high, about 15% of the patient will relapse. And disease uh, the treatment related to mobility, mobility is also very high. So, we are going to now we're going to talk about the pathophysiology of the, the anchor vasculitis. So, it is all started with the neutral pill. The neutral pill is Triggered by the pro, pro inflammatory cytokine, like in the leukemia one, six, human necrotic pressure, and gamma, uh, end up in gamma. Or you can, uh, you can also trigger by the, the infection, and then uh, another one is uh, the trigger from the complement system, uh, especially by C5A. Uh, which is also known as a uh, not blood toxin or a very strong chemotactic uh, factor. That when these factors tr try to trigger the neutrophil, when the neutrophil lost the tolerance, it, it started the priming process. So in the intras intracellular uh, antigen like uh, M uh, MPO and PI3 become a uh, membrane expression. And then when these Antigen based spreads on the membrane, it binds with the anchor, and that activates the neutrophil. 
Uh, so one neutral phase at the very end. It's, what it did was that it degranulated the, it, it called a degranulation with the reacted oxygen species and lipid enzyme that damaged the vascular endothelium that caused the vasculitis. And another mechanism is that it creates a, a condition called naptosis. What is naptosis? Nap means neutrophil explosive large bug. So it basically make a, a net by its own DNA strand. It create a net, and then the net is attached with different um, things. It's called like histone, uh, NPO, PR3, cell protecting. There's a lot of different steps. That it create a net with these these things. It is a very uh, it and uh, it kills all the infection along the stream. Uh, these nests need to be degraded. So it is, that mechanism is a very interesting one. And it's, it's part of the pathophysiology of the ankle vasculitis because it exposes the intra, intracellular antigen like MPO, PR3, histone, and it gives the chance, it gives the body immune system to, to form a new antibody like ANGAR, anybody to MPO, anybody to PR3, anybody to uh, histone. When you find anybody to MPO, PR3, you can get the ANGAR antibody. If you find anybody to histone, you wouldn't get that, the lupus. So these nests need to be degraded and then eventually this have to disappear. But if it's overstimulated, if you have a lot of nests, it cannot be degraded properly and then it, it creates no ANGAR antibody. So organ involvement and clinical representation. So we are nephrologists, we interest in kidney. So we just, I look at the kidney, which organ has most involved in kidney. So MPA, about 90% of the patient involved kidney. GPA, about 80% of the patient involved kidney with together with the pulmonary and EMG. And then EPA, about 45% of the patient uh, uh, present with the kidney problem, uh, also with mostly with the pulmonary and, and neurogen. It's a multi organ system uh, disease. So, how are we going to diagnose this patient? So, when they consulted us because of the rapid decline in kidney function, we do the we do the UA, we see in the Julia, Julia, we spin the urine. And see if there any dysmorphic RBC, also for the candlestick. If we have the candlestick, then, uh, then we can assume that it is a glomerular bleeding. Uh, and then we can consider we can consider as a rapid uh, progressive glomerular nephritis. And then we send for anchor antibody, AMA, anti GDF, and pumping. Uh, So when I was in medical school, um, I I tried to work on by heart. So if you have a uh, if you have an MBA, the 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 you want to see a PN card need to be bothered. GPA a CN card need to be bothered. That in real life, if you if you if you look at the if you if you look at the pathogenesis, it's create that those it 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 expose all the intracellular and the germ. So in, in in this patient you can have you can have any kind of uh antibody. With with GPA majority is Yanka, but I am not surprised anymore if the patient has Yanka. And uh, right now MPA the same thing. And the EGPA is the same thing. So like if you see like Yanka, uh, I cannot just say this is an MPA. That it can be anything like because because when I when I look at the pathogenesis, so it exposes all the intra uh cellular and DJ and then any any kind of anybody can form. Um, yes. I just want to say I really like this slide and I, I like it um because PGP, right? We don't see it as often in our patients as the GP. And essentially, most of the EGBA I've seen were negative, anchored in. 
right? They have other clinical diagnosis in the large, right? To the large extent. So that is so important, but it's a flip of the coin. You'll either see or you probably won't see that part of the data. You should not roll out HPA just based on the negative test. Thank you. So uh, how are we going to diagnose? Uh, so if we suspect kidney vasculitis, that if the clinical presentation match the vasculitis, and if the patient is positive for PR3 or MDO, then to sham. And then uh, to start the treatment, and uh, you can you can start the biopsy whatever is the clinical. The treatment is the important. That if you match the clinical presentation, but there's no ER3 or MPO positive, looking for the biopsy, nucleus and contraindication. If there's no contraindication, stay to the biopsy. So, biopsy finding uh, can uh, yeah, parallel the severity of the clinical presentation. You are, is a positive immediately needs. You're not going to see any complex, you're not going to see any protein, you're not going to see complement from that sample. You're just going to see the damage is done by vasculitis. So it started from high focal and segmented ulnar nephritis to confuse necrotizing presenting on nephritis. Uh, you can sometimes see mononuclear tubular intestinal damage, right? That's that you know you need to be fixed on that front. So this is the histopathology stage by anchor associated government uh, nonopritis. About more than 50% are uh, globally subject. If you see more than 50% of the global right are steroid, uh is is a steroiding class, more than 50 percent are normal, it is a focal class. More than 50% are cellular percent, it's called percent class and miss class. Why these are important? The scarotic scar 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 class uh, associated with the poor outcome, the focal class with the favorable outcome, no prognosis, and then crescentic class, the it being reported uh, discrepancy. So how are we going to treat this patient? We're going to treat the patient based on the severity. It can be narrow than treatment or now like treatment disease, or it can be organ treatment or like treatment disease. Uh, like uh, when you have a glomerular renopitis, when you have a pulmonary hemorrhage, cerebral vasculitis, caritis, GI bleeding from vasculitis, pericarditis, myocarditis, if you see any of these, it is under the organ treatment or like treatment uh, disease. Our goal of the treatment is to achieve rapid and long standing remission because if they, got, they are going to relapse, so about 50% of the patient, the remission become relapsed. And there's a two stages of in treatment, intentional remission, and the two is maintenance. Before I move on the, the treatment, I just want to show a few slides. This is, this is called running can vasculitis at the score. This is this score is used to assess the patient disease uh, and the If the, the measurement score box is five score zero in remission, score more than one in active disease. Just just one. You don't need to have one and you can call active disease. And This is the, 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 the checklist, okay? So to use this, this is a very uh, complicated score. I try to employ it as like said that it, it me train to do the, the vascular score, I think. So definition of disease activity means there's a signs and symptom attributed to active disease in any organ system. Remission mean B vascular of uh, equals zero, but in global nephritis, it is not necessarily you have to, you don't have to become uh, resolved in a two-year 
as long as it, what it mentioned is saying is that it's as long as it's improved or stable GFR. You can have a protein urea still, you can have an image urea still, but it's considered as a, it, it could be from the scarring from the disease at the body. And then you can still have a protein urea, you can still have an image urea. And then that probably, that's going to be your baseline. Because if you have to know what's your baseline, and then you can consider as a remission so that you can diagnose the labs. Because if you if you if you see protein we are 500 right now, but you see a brand in six months, that that means there's a relapse there. So, so in relapse is the finest of all kinds of increased disease, disease anybody after a period of partial or complete remission. Return of increased hematuria with a proteinuria meaning kidney relapse. Relapse can be divided into major and minor relapse. And major relapse defines the life and organ threat. Example of major relapse includes alveolar hemorrhage, subglottic stenosis, glomerulonephritis, and vasculitis like threatening vision. And treatment resistance, the last one is treatment resistance. It defines the presence of appearance of the kidney, uh, persistent of a uh, Appearance of kidney and or systemic manifestation of vasculitis while receiving equal intensity potential in treatment. This is what Kirigo proposed to in induce the, the remission. So I didn't know anything, so I, I, I looked into each and every medication. So in addition, this is in nine. In 1970, we started, we found out that with IV dose of and the group of corticoids were affected from the ankyl diabetic. After 20 years, there's a, there's a study in the a group of GPA patients. Not only IV cyclophosphide, oral cyclophosphide can also be affected in, in induction or remission. But, uh, there's a lot of Disease-related and treatment-related morbidity were often go far, and 30% of patients die during the, 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 the study. In fact, 86% of the patients have the irreversible feature of their disease, and 42% of the patients have side effect of the treatment. So in 2009, uh, there is a cyclo trial done by Lam or Lam 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 the past two cyclophosphide and all the cyclophosphide. <laughs> See which one is better. It was then input in center in row. And the, there's, there's a 149 patient newly diagnosed uh, PAB with the net wall plan. In one end, there's a past two steroid group, and another end is all the steroid group. There's no difference in remission. They do different in time of remission or portion of the patient that will be cheap remission. There's, there was no difference. That six percent, six patient, uh, six patient in the oral group and thirteen patient in the past group, past uh, past two steroid, uh, past two but said to both my group uh, had uh, subsequently relapse. But did you mention any to any more in this study? Uh, but that cumulated dose is higher in oral uh, oral group, and then the the side effects rate is also uh, also rate or the combination in past group. So when you look at this study, uh, what you see is that like oral cyclophosphamide is as good as uh, the IV uh, potential to cause more side effect because of the higher accumulated dose. So they did a, a long term follow. In long in long term follow, they follow for about 4.3 years, and there's no difference in survival. About 20% of the oral group and and 39, almost 40% of the patient pass through at least one relapse. So this is significant. So oral group have less relapse than IV. And then and there's no different in renal function at steady end and no different in class of it. That's about cyclophosphamide and then uh, 
we move on to the adjustment. So around 2009, we started following um, the uh, the we do my uh, we do not match the my um, superior to the cyclophosphine, so they did a trial. So this is an open liver design uh randomized control trial, about 44 patients included. Uh it distributed three to one. In reduction with the reducement group patient get the reduction patient get the IV, the group of 41, plus two doses of IV cyclophosphine. They have, they, they have 33 patients in this group and 11 patients in the uh, steroid and only steroid and cyclophosphine. And the primary endpoint is to sustain remission rate at the at 12 months. About 76 uh, percent in the reducement group and the 82 percent in the the cyclophosphine group sustain remission. That there is that no uh, no no uh, is the same as no statistically significant. Severe so events affect all car in 42 percent. In reducement group and then 36 percent in the cytochrome group. Again, no, uh, no, no significantly uh, significant. And six of that patient in reducement group, and 11 patient in the control group side. So it's the same still. And then med uh, median increase in GFR is also no difference. So from this study, what we got is that reducement is induced remission. Reducement is as good as cyclophosphine, but this is not safer than cyclophosphine. Uh, and the next step is range study. This is also compared between reducement uh, and oral cyclophosphine. Uh, but in this study, Patient with your opinion more than full well issued. So this is uh, this is important. Uh, in retrospect group, the only just pure retrospect, there is no backup with the IV cyclophosphine anymore. And then uh, the next group is over cyclos and and then with uh, remission. And then primary point was remission of disease without the use of prednisone as six. About 64% in reducement group and then 53% met uh, uh, in the cyclophosphine group achieved remission. So they met the criteria of non inferior or uh, non inferiority in patient with uh, serum premium or less than four. There's no data in patient with serum premium or more. The, the reductment based regimen was more efficacious than cyclophosphine based regimen for international remission of relapsing disease. Uh, there's a 67 percent compared with the 42 percent in graduate of Reductment was also affected as cyclophosphine in treatment with major renal disease or alveolar hemorrhage. And there's no significant difference between treatment group and and ruby respiratory and uh, uh, What about glucopodium? Yes. What was the regimen of cyclophosphine? Yeah, this is in that trial. Or a Next one is So it is a major contributor of advanced events. We try to, that uh, since 1970, we didn't think. IV diagnosis of one gram, one to three gram in induction. And there was no, uh, no, that has not been tested in any randomized control trial. That is working, so we will try, try to do that. And then, and then uh, oral prednisone, one milligram by kg has been used in most of the randomized control trial without, without randomized control trial support. But uh, since this is a major contributor of the advanced advance, we are trying to. So we did the, the not we, we did the study <laughs> uh, to to see low dose uh, glucocorticoid is as good as high dose glucocorticoid. So we did the study in one forty patient with 
Bishop with severe glomerulonephritis and maybe the hemorrhage fever is leading. So there's no leader in patient with uh, severe glomerulonephritis, uh, severe uh, GM patient. So patient will randomizely achieve reduced low prednisone 2.5 milligram per kg or high dose of prednisone. Although all the patients are in, uh, in, in that with the uh, redox map. And then the primary gun point was the remeshing rate at six months. And uh, we specified net impurity <laughs> was uh, 20%. At six months, 71% of reduced dose and 69% 69 percent of high dose will achieve remission. So that meets that criteria of non impurity. But it's it, it does it didn't meet the criteria of superiority. Twenty one of us uh, of us event for her in thirteen of the patient, and forty one of us event for her in twenty four patient with the high dose group. It meant the uh. It is significant. Uh, it was 0.02. And seven serious depression for her in five patients in the reduced uh reduced dose group, and then 20 for her in, in high dose group. So it met the uh, uh, that's this is this is so. Now we want to know that's my chance is good or not in condition with an endomastomy. So if we did the about 352 patients were uh were, were in this trial, patients were randomly assigned to undergo plus my chain and then plus my change, and then in the same time it also assigned to uh, standard dose regimen of uh, all your and uh, already to 45 and reduce dose. So this patient will follow by seven years. So that occur in classification group, about 28% of patient dead in, and 31% of the patient dead in control group. So and then the value is 0 0.25, it's not significant. So so plasma chain cannot decrease the uh, water based on this uh, Can you go back and talk about exclusions from the uh, trial? <coughs> those are important, right? Yeah. So let's go discuss the results. I don't write it down. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, let's go forward. You know. I'll pull up the whole list. And then that from uh that from uh reduced door group 37 percent now 37 percent in reduced door reduced group and then uh standard dose group is 25 percent and it met the criteria for net equality and then serious infection at one scale were less common in reduced uh reduced dose group than in standard dose group so Based on this trial, the plasma resist cannot increase the motility. Uh, reduced dose group is as affected as the high case group. In already with the older group, the global got right, and then that impression is in, in which you store. Then another randomized trial to see is there any effect on the that to see the plasma freezes is any effect on the thing of so about 137 patients and when they assigned to, to receive the intravenous um, diagnosis or and the plasma chain or next to the system by chain for more than seven sessions. So these patients are sick. So create means you have to of more than all the patient in this in, in this study have to have more than five points. So both group received oral uh, cyclophosphamide and then uh, prednisone as a fashion agent. Uh, and fine, 
was the diocese in Japan had three months. And three months, 49 percent in retirement zone group, and then 69 percent plus my group is become independent of the analysis, which is very significant with 0 0.02. As compared with uh, type IV brain, zone in the plus my chain, reduced risk of progression to BSK is 24 percent to 90 percent at 12 months, and then patient survival and severe advanced event. The compared to previous survey and uh, severe advancement in, in IV metabolism, there's 76 and 48 percent, and then in plus my chain, 73 and 50 percent. That's more difficult. <laughs> So this trial complements the previous one. Is they excluded in less than five minutes. They are all contradicting each other. The maximus? Mm -hmm. The maximus excluded. So both are excluded. Yeah. 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 That, that was the whole point of the card. Because Mapex is old, right? Mapex is like more than 10 years old. Mapex versus the new one. Mm -hmm. And so it learned from Mapex. That one was reflexomer dependent. That one was cyclophosphomer dependent. Right? So that's why we pull up. I think that, that is the difference. They are not actually So how did you define some here? Excellent. Uh, I forget to look at the I'm just reading from the protocol. You are relaxing clinical diagnosis of Wagner's or Wagner's to get the plenty of TIs, for instance, in the travel book and sensitive definitions, and father tester to get a screen or MPO, and severe vitalities to find at least one of the following. You have a problem with your family biopsy, demonstrating purple, necrotizing women with a to act. Urine sediment, they're drug like a urine contributor or red cell capsule, and EGFR less than 50. GFR less than 50. And, less they, and they excluded the patient with over GFR less than 50. Well, there's the the nothing, there, there's nothing about. Um, so they included patient. What does it mean to you? Or maybe it would seem uh, in their mean them. Let me check. I was last time I was there was about the year. Yeah, let me take a look. What that means? Yeah. This is just the pro the protocol you just said. I think the main purpose is with this trial. Right, but it was newer trying to suggest to engage even in the sick people. That was more like a Hopefully, they are not sick sick. Even that's the same. <laughs> you can, you can, you can uh, conclude at the end. <laughs> so we try to uh, replace the uh, what those two might have a lot of side effects. Uh, try to replace with the uh, C three A because this is a new medication. So it's about that. It's a C a C five A receptor body. Uh, so in this study, well, there are three hundred thirty one patients. Uh, 160 patients in the Barbogan group and then 165 patients in Brennan's group. Patients with uh, severe end organ manifestations such as GSR or GFR less than 50 and alveolar hemorrhage will find mechanical ventilation well is good. So when you have a Barbogan 30 million BI group, when you have Brennan's table, all receive uh, induction by cyclophosphide followed by azathioprine or uh, Lidoc. I mean, my was remission at the week 26, and no glucocorticoid no glu 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 used in previous four weeks. Second so MI was sustained remission at both 26 and 52 weeks. And both MI were tested for negative purity and possibility. The remission at 26 weeks was observed in 72% of a bacopan group and then 70% of prednisone group. So it met the criteria of NAD, if you, uh, sorry, it 
if not the criteria of NAM inferiority or prevent the two point three one, and then doesn't match the criteria for the security. And you sustain with machine at the week of 53. That's the second real point. Uh, 65% in the above open room and then 54% in the prenatal room. It met the criteria for, for severity and then um, lack of purity. So serious advanced event for her in uh, 37% uh, in above open room and 39% in the prenatal room. So from this study, uh, at the week of 26, Avagoba is as good as Prenatal, uh, that is not better than Prenatal. At, at, at 52 weeks, Avagoba is better than Prenatal. The side effects is, uh, the advanced events are the same. This is the trial that they did it in um, men or gantrachne or light treatment division. Uh, that with the serotonin of less than 1.6 because the, the standard induction uh, medication was cyclophosphamide, <coughs> but we want to replace with some other medication. Uh, that's what they tried it with the methylphosate. So the primary endpoint was the remission at the uh, remission rate at the six month. At six month, the remission rate was comparable, 89%. Uh, almost 90% to 93.5%. And uh, in mitofrenic group, the remission was delayed in patients with this, uh, extensive disease and family involvement. The last rates at the 18 months were higher in mitofrenic group with 69% and cyclophenic is 46.5%. Now, we're going to move on to maintenance. Uh, in maintenance, the, these are the, the medications that we use for the maintenance, cyclophosphamide, redoxamide, azathioprine, and like they were both at So in, in this trial, this trial is between uh, cyclophosphamide, or cyclophosphamide and azathioprine in patient in, in, in treatment of maintenance patients. There are 155 newly diagnosed both GPA and NPA patients with, uh, with a serum craving configuration of 5.7 milligrams screening time. The induction with the cyclophosphamide and brenazone, one and received cyclophosphamide therapy 1.5 milligram by kg for 12 months, and then after that, they switch it to azathioprine. And then uh, the, the second group have the azathioprine. Who so will receive uh, prednisone and will follow for 18 months for study. The relapse was the primary endpoint. About 15.5% relapse occur in adult brain, and then 13.7% is in cyclophosphate group, so there is no, no different. Then severe advanced event occur in 11% of adult brain, and then 10% of cyclophosphate occur. That was not like we have to uh, have the severe loss of pain. There's no different. But uh, what we got from this study is um, the relapse rate is higher in NPA patient than GPV patient, with a B value of 0 0.03. Uh, so by this study, we, we, what we learned is that um, azotherapy brain is as good as cyclophosphate uh, loss of pain in terms of you know, maintaining. Um, in maintenance with the severe uh, similar side effect. Next one is uh, azathioprine or methotrexate in maintenance of antibiotics. So when both again we follow the mission get the cyclophosphate and corticosteroid as an induction agent, then primary hypothesis for methotrexate is safer than azathioprine. So Two group of 63 patients between Azotel Green and then we took a group. The primary endpoint was the first event of firing discontinuing discontinuation of a cell drug of organ death. But the primary endpoint was reached in seven patients who received Azotel Green and then 12 patients who received the process, but there's no support. Next one is. Uh, between metal, uh, mycophenolate uh, and azathioprine. So, to, 
The, the, the study was done in one hammer baby situation and a 42 month study. 80 patients uh, of the patient received the cell brain and the 76 percent of uh, 76 patients had uh, microphenolate. All the patients are uh, uh, got the cyclophosphate and brain of the injection again. The last was more common in MMF group compared to the other type group. Uh, with the p value of 0 0.03, and then severe Zaba event uh, did not differ significantly between these groups. About 16% uh, in the other being group and 7.5% in the microphenomic group, p value of 0 0.12. Now we're going to compare with the reduct effect and that as a being group for the maintenance of the hospitals. Um, the study was done in 115 patients, 58 patients in the other thyroid group, and then 57 patients in the redox method. That, that again, patients yeah, in that time, the cyclophosphamide and pregnancy. The primary endpoint at MAP 28 was the rate of major relapse. We compare the rate of major relapse in these patients. So, major relapse has occurred in 17 patients in other thyroid group, and then three patients in redox group, and with a B value of 0 0.002. And then 25 patients in each group have severe apostle. So redox is better than other based on person. The other maintenance trial. Uh, this this may, uh, Mary Stan, uh, Mary Stan trial two is compared between Metotrexate tailored dose and then um, a fixed dose region. So what what they do is a 500 milligram at the randomization with infusion and then they, they follow the C19 and the lymphocyte here about one that anchor by and they give to the, the the dose and then fixed dose region means we don't care about what whatever you have you just give 500 milligram dose at a zero 13 and then six 12, and eight months. So Primary point is number of relax at the amount of 20 again. So there's 14 relax all card in tailored rules, a tailored dose which I mean and eight relax in the fixed dose which I mean that the value is not significant. But uh the next study is the uh, reduce and this is this uh, compare again reduce and other by by 20 months after the randomization. 13% in the reduction of arm relapse, and then 38% relapse in the other brain group. So relapse rate is less likely in reduction of group. Again, it's proven that reduction is better than other Mary Stan 3, this is the study between reduction and embassy. So at 28 months of relapse, there's 96% uh, relaxed free survival, was 96%, and then compared with the 74% in control. So relaxed is less likely in reduction compared to this. So this is the, the practical treatment regimen for AAV proposed by the game book. So diagnosis of AAV, disease assessment, injection remission with now we know the reduction and recovery by or about and cyclophosphamide combination plus glucose white or plus my change when you receive the the, the drug uh, when you remission maintenance uh, you can maintain with reducement or you can maintain with uh, adult diaphragm with take part of the white and then you try to achieve the auto drug remission. So better considering when to choose uh, between reducement and cyclophosphamide and then uh, so we just met to prefer children, adults, and premium possible men, and then concern about their mortality. Free over the glucocorticoid spread, sparing, especially important, relapsing disease, because we was probably by, I'm sorry, uh, we just in especially infected in patient with relapse, and then ER3 anchor disease. And cyclosomal prefer if you cannot get with one. And severe GM with a certain name on more than four uh, independent medicine leader. And between aura and IV, there's no difference between aura and IV. Uh, you can, uh, it's mostly patient, but the population who, who cannot afford the IV, the IV is usually more expensive than aura. 
uh, do not have complete access to the education center. We shall hold some in the ministry of all where we will not be difficult and you can do that, but if you cannot call if you are not compliant with payment of release by the obligation. Uh, we will be ready to assess the intuition center uh, with a low white blessing. Uh, yes, because uh, aura of cyclophosphine, the community dose of aura of uh, cyclophosphine is higher than ID. So it's increased the chance of developing leukopenia. Uh, patient who already, already have a moderate related dose of cyclophosphine. These are the uh, those recommended uh, dose of the medication. I'm not going to read it. This is the recommended uh, reduced corticosteroid dose that they use in Pacific Stripe. And considering the retrospect or rather way in terms of maintenance, if the patient has the relaxing disease, psychiatric disease, free old disease, free old adult, and then uh, other the brain allergy and the breast sparing, especially important. So the having prefer if you cannot get the retrospect. Yeah, if the patient has any low IgG of less than 300, because we just met one of the side of the window that it can decrease the immunity of the These are the, the recommended dose. So, factor that increases the relapse rates in the AAV, uh, the baseline factor of diagnosis of GPA, which is more, which all can be relaxed, and PR3. And then high serotonin due diagnosis, no extensive disease involvement of ENT. Factor after diagnosis of this history of relapse, you can have relapse again, and current positive at the end of in dash. So, and then brace in and color. And then treatment factor lower cyclophosphate exposure, immunosuppressive withdrawal of the particular. Let me summarize the, the treatment. Uh, so cyclophosphamide and glucocorticoid are the state cornerstone of the treatment of the AAV. Oral daily cyclophosphamide is as effective as IV cyclophosphamide and no side effect that will last relapse. Retosamide and cyclophosphamide is comparable to IV or cyclophosphamide in, in DASH. Reducement alone in induction is comparable to cyclophosphamide induction. That is, there's no availability that will support if the patient's your pain is more than four. Low dose glucocorticoid is non inferior to inferior for the efficacy that's safer than high glucocorticoid and is prescribed in patients with GFR of more than 15 without a relapse. Plasma freezes is recommended in patients with double positive for both antigenian and anger. That's for sure. Uh, plasma freezes improve renal outcome in patients with the serotonin of more than 5.7. But uh, I make a mistake here. So, but if it does not, it does not improve the patient motivation based on the pathology history. A bacopan can be used as an alternative for glucocorticoid, but it is expensive and its lack of long term data is only steady for 52 months. Methotrexate is mixed. It's mixed. Yeah. 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 with the glucocorticoid uh, can be used as an induction in patients with non life or organ therapy. Reducement maintenance after cyclophosphamide induction has been shown to be superior to azathioprine for prevention of relapse. Uh, azathioprine maintenance up to 18 months after induction or remission with cyclophosphamide has been shown to be uh, equally effective as continuing cyclophosphamide for one year and switching to azathioprine. And Consider MMF or metotrexate as an alternative to azathioprine for the maintenance therapy in patient intolerant to azathioprine, but MMF should not be used if the patient has EGFR or less than six. There's a uh, special situation. Uh, if you have a refractory disease, just do everything. 
your increased glucagon required, you can, by adding the reduce net, if you already use cyclophosphamide, if you already use uh, MVC plus. And then you can also do plus by change to everything. <laughs> <laughs> the fuse alveolar bleeding with the hypoxia. So alveolar bleeding alone is not the problem. It's annoying. But with hypoxia, then you can consider a plus my chain in addition with the global quantum And then you can also do cyclophosphamide or just make Just do everything. So delayed transplantation until patients are complete clinical remission. It doesn't need to be anchored for more than six months, and the persistent of anchor should not delay the treatment. 